So today, le today's lecture is about the central nervous system tracks. So first of all, we must know what is the basic concept about the track? What is meant by the tracks? Let me tell you one thing. Let's suppose that there are a lot of rats sitting here. These are many, many rats. I don't know how to draw rats, but anyway. And they are having tails, and their tails are going upward. And if all these tails together, making a bundle of tails, right? This bundle of tails, right? This can be called track. Let me tell you how. Neuron may be taken as a rat. Every neuron has a long axon. In central nervous system, if a group of neurons having lot of axons and these axons are making a bundle and that bundle of axons, right, which are moving up and down in central nervous system, they are considered track, right. So what are tracks? Tracks are the bundle of axons within the central nervous system having common origin, common termination and tracks are moving up and down. Let me make this concept more clear. First of all, you must know what is the difference between gray matter and white matter in central nervous system, right? As I told you, let's suppose that these are some neurons, cell bodies, cell bodies of neurons and these are their axons, right? Now, this collection of cell bodies, this is called gray matter. What is it called? Gray matter. And these, their axons, they are called white matter. If we think neurons are like rats and very long tails, then where a lot of rats are sitting together, what is that? Gray matter. And where a lot of tails are going, what is that? White matter. white matter. So first concept should be there, what is gray matter and what is white matter in central nervous system. Then, next concept which is important is that in the central nervous system, let, let me draw this, I suppose, your central nervous system, Right? Now, there are some neurons which are present at lower level and their axons are going up. And their axons are going up. Of course, this bundle of axons is white matter. And when white matter is making bundles and these bundles of axons are moving up and down, they are called tracks. The bundle of axons which are moving from lower level of central nervous system moving as a bundle to upper level, right, they are considered ascending tracks. Opp opposite to that, let's suppose there are a group of neurons here, cell bodies, and these are their white matter or axons. And these axons are coming down, downward in the neuronal axis. Now, this bundle of axons which are having common origin, common termination, is that right? So, this bundle of axons this is called also track, but because cell bodies are at upper level and axons are coming downward, so these should be considered descending tracks. So what are tracks? Tracks are bundles of axon, right, which are having common origin and common termination. And they are uh, present in the central nervous system uh, in cephalocaudal axis. They are connecting the central nervous system upper part with the lower part and lower part of the central nervous system with the upper part. Now those tracks, we take the information from the lower part of the central nervous system to the upper part, they are called ascending tracks. And those tracks, which take information from the upper part of the central nervous system and bring it down, they are called descending, descending track. Is that right? Another thing which I want to make it clear here, as you know that axons together are called white matter. Is that right? That is called white matter. And this white matter we have divided into vertically present, up and down. And these are which are vertically connecting. These are of course tracks. And what will be this? This is ascending track. And this is, yes, descending track. Then there is some white matter which connect the central nervous system antero posteriorly. There are some bundles of axons which connect the central nervous system antero posteriorly. What are these called? Yes, please. Yes, please. The bundle of axon which connect the central nervous system components 
एंट्रो पोस्टीरियरली फॉर एग्जाम्पल फ्रंटल लोब कनेक्टेड विद ऑक्सीपिटल राइट दीज आर कॉल्ड दे एसोसिएट द इंटीरियर पार्ट ऑफ सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम विद द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट एंड पोस्टीरियर पार्ट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द इंटीरियर पार्ट दे आर कॉल्ड एसोसिएशन फाइबर सो व्हाइट मैटर हैज ट्रैक्स एज वेल एज एसोसिएशन एसोसिएशन फाइबर्स इज दट राइट एंड थर्ड टाइप इज दैट देर आर अदर बंडल ऑफ एग्जाम्स विच कोनेक्ट द सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम राइट एंड लेफ्ट there are of course what is white matter white matter is just collection of axons is that right collections of cell bodies are gray matter and collection of axons are white matter then white matter or collection of axons are making bundles and connecting up and down in the central nervous system these are tracks when same bundles connecting intra posteriorly they are called association, association fiber and when they are connecting right and left they are called yes please they are called commissures they are called commissures why i revise a little bit this thing that i want to put that tracks into proper perspective in your mind right that tracks are white matter association fibers are white matter commissural fibers are white matter so all of these are fibers the only difference is tracks are those bundles of fibers which connect in central nervous system up and down Association fibers are those bundle of axons which connect the central nervous system antero posteriorly or postero anteriorly, and commissures are those central nervous system fibers which connect the central nervous system uh, components right and left. Is that clear? Can you give me some example of a commissure? Please tell me corpus callosum. There's such a big commissure. Which connect the right cerebral hemisphere with the left, and of course, left with the right. And there are many other commissures in central nervous system. Is that right? Now, once you have really clear concept of what are tracks, now I will make some concept related with the ascending tracks and descending tracks, right? And then we will deal with individual tracks. to really develop the concept of ascending and descending track you should go back to the very basic concept how central nervous system work the function of central nervous system is that it should receive all the sensory information it should re receive the sensory. sensory information then it should process the sensory information and then it should make the decisions this is the basic function of the central nervous system let's suppose here is your central nervous system right now here is your hand now suddenly you touch your hand with a very hot thing so naturally what will happen some stimulus will come you to touch your finger with something hot right now that information should go to the central nervous system information number 1 should go to the central nervous system of course when you have a stimulus right when you have a stimulus a certain receptor will be activated what will be activated receptor will be activated okay don't get something very hot maybe it will burn okay you touch something very decent and you love to touch it and then you start touching it again and again how will you it work they touching it you liked it and then you started touching again and again i'm talking about you now how the whole nervous system worked you touch it the stimulus of touch mechanical stimulus should be converted into electrochemical action potentials so what really happens when you touch something there should be some apparatus here there should be some apparatus here which should convert stimulus energy which should convert stimulus energy into action potential right so that electrochemical fluctuations which are called action potential should move along the axons to the central nervous system right now this operators which convert the this operators which convert the energy of a stimulus into electrochemical fluctuations right this operators is called what is the name of this operators these are called receptors <laughs> oh my god you people hide your knowledge write it down what are receptors neuronal receptor write it down 
If you don't know that, you don't know anything about nervous system. What are receptors? Receptors are transducers, biological transducers. Then you must be asking, what is transducer? Transducers are certain operators which can convert one type of energy into another type of energy. Anything, any biological thing which can convert one type of energy into another type of energy, that is called transducers. And in our body, such biological transducers are simply called receptors. So what are receptors? You must know the definition at least. Receptors are special operators, right? That may be free nerve endings or there may be some special group of cells attached with the nerve ending which can convert a very special type of stimulus energy into electrochemical energy of action potential. Is that right? These are called receptors. Do you have receptor for electromagnetic waves? You don't have it. Do you have receptors for electromagnetic wave that electromagnetic wave come to your body and you convert that into action potential and respond to that? No. Okay, you don't have it. I think these two are blind. <laughs> oh my God, light is the visible part of the electromagnetic waves. And you do have light receptors. They are called rods and cones. What are rods and cones? A very unique operators which can convert visible light energy into Action potential then optic nerve. Oh my God, you people are really... No comments. No. Stop <laughs> right? So we must know what is receptor. Receptors are the biological operators usually at the end of the sensory nerve endings which are supposed to convert the particular type of stimulus into, into action potential. Right? Taste buds are chemical receptors. The chemicals in the food can be tasted. They can convert the taste chemical interaction into action potentials. Even you know yeah, when you have some very good smell of fragrance or cologne, what are those things? From there there are evaporating molecules which go to your nose, then they go to the olfactory mucosa. In the olfactory mucosa there are receptors. When your you know very good smell molecules interact with those receptors, this chemical interaction is converted into action potential. This is the very first and basic concept in sensory nervous system, that there should be a receptor. And sometimes free nerve endings as, act as receptors. Is that right? So, we are talking about ascending tracks. I will come to that. Let me put it at right position in your mind. First of all, when you are touching something, the mechanical deformation, suppose someone touch me here, right? Just slight deformation in the tissue will activate certain receptors. And those mechanical receptors will convert the mechanical energy into action potential. And if stimulus is not sub-threshold, stimulus is threshold or supra-threshold, action potential will start moving in the sensory nerves. So there should be receptor and then from the receptors, uh, action potential through the sensory nerves should come to the central nervous system. Once action potentials are brought to the central nervous system, for example, spinal cord, it brings a lot of action potentials. Is that right? Through 31 pairs of nerves. Is that right? A lot of action potentials are coming to the spinal cord. Some decisions are made within the spinal cord, but some decisions have to be made at the higher level. Is that right? So, this information this information which is coming to the central nervous system, it may be taken upward. It is taken at higher level through a chain of neurons. For example, it goes up to the cerebral cortex. Now, these bundles which are taking these biological cables, which are taking the information from lower level to the upward, these are ascending tracks. Then, in the central nervous system, decision will be made for example, you have touched someone and that person respond unfavorably. And then you decide to pull your hand in a very sad way backward. Is that right? Now what happened? You touched, action potential came, you are in the process of enjoying here. Then with the eye you see unpleasant response. Again, more information through the eyes goes and you decide that response may be dangerous by the other person. Is that right? What happens? Central nervous decision is, decision is to pull the hand back. Then, from higher center, orders should come down. What is this? 
descending track. What is this? Descending track. And of course, then a very sad neuron, black colored. It is taking the information to the muscles to pull the finger back. What is this? Motor neuron. This is the simplest form how the central nervous system works. It collects the information, it processes the information, it makes a decision and sends the order out. The collection system is, there is a receptor, then there are sensory neurons coming to central nervous system, then there are ascending tracks, then higher level processing, then there are descending tracks, then there are motor nerves and in the end there is a factor system. A factor system may be a muscle or muscle or gland. Sometimes gland response, if there is a very good food, with very good smell, how the system will work? Smell, receptor in the olfactory mucosa, action potential to central nervous system, central nervous system decides a good smell, last time you enjoyed it, so pathways will come down, stimulate the certain motor neurons, which stimulate the parotid gland and other salivary glands, and you start producing saliva. Or if someone is, someone else is a host, then maybe you decide to give a smile also, so that he starts the food activity for you. Is that right? So this is the basic thing. Now we are very clear what are tracks. These are the bundles of the neurons, right? And the sending tracks take the information from the lower part of the central nervous system and take it upward. And the sending track take the decisions from central nervous system and bring at the lower level. So by this discussion, now it must be very clear, whenever we talk about the ascending track, no doubt they must be always for the sensory system. They will be always connected with the sensory system. And whenever we talk about descending tracks, they must be connected with the motor system. Is that clear to you people? Fine. Now we go into detail of tracks. What do you think? In the spinal cord, tracks will be part of white matter or gray matter? Of course, they must be part of white matter. So let's see in the spinal cord, a little bit structure of spinal cord. Right, let's suppose here is your spinal cord. Is that right? And here is your central canal. What do you think? What are these things? These are cell bodies of neurons. So this must be gray matter or white matter? Gray matter, gray matter right? Gray matter and spinal cord makes a butterfly shape or edge shape, right? And this gray matter, these blue circles are the rats, neuron cell body, right? What is really there? This is dorsal horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord. These are ventral horn, or simply call it anterior horn and posterior horns. And at some level of the spinal cord, they do have, what is this? Lateral horn of spinal cord. We'll discuss that later. Right now, that is not our concern. Our concern is to talk about the white matter in the spinal cord, which must be having our tracks, which we are going to discuss. Now, white matter in the spinal cord is, this is the white matter, this is the white matter, this is white matter, but let me make it more clear. Mm, these are which neurons going out? Do you think these are motor or sensory? These are motor right and what are these neurons going okay i will make it this is the motor root this is the motor root of root of what yes motor root of spinal cord and here there should be yes sensory root now motor fibers come out of central nervous system through Yes, ventral root or motor root. Is that right? And sensory fiber, sensory information is taken to the central nervous system through the dorsal root. And dorsal root ganglion is actually, there is a cell body, right? And from here there is a unipolar. There is one connection coming out and it has one central process. Another is peripheral which is connected maybe with the skin or whatever. So it has to take information from the periphery, sensory system, 
taking the information eventually to the dorsal root and dorsal root is connected with the spinal cord is that right now okay what you understand this is the ventral root and this is the dorsal root and dorsal root is having which ganglion which ganglion is present in dorsal root dorsal root ganglion right then what is this thing both roots unite together and what they make this is the trunk of the spinal nerve classical spinal nerve right the ventral root dorsal root and trunk and then it divide into one thing going anteriorly other going posteriorly what is this thing this is always having which fibers of course you are wrong no mixed you have to learn it more clearly oh my god you want to learn track but first you have to learn the roots okay listen what happens that this is anterior ramus this is posterior ramus sometimes ventral ramus come together and make plexus which is called like brachial plexus or lumbar plexus but for a while you just trust me that from the spinal cord there are ventral roots and dorsal roots and together they make the spinal nerve trunk and that trunk classically divide into ventral ramus and dorsal ramus is that right ventral ramus is usually innervating the structures in antero lateral wall of the body and dorsal ramus is going to innervate the structures which are on the back of the body is that right of course on the back there skin so there must be sensory but there muscles are also on the back so it means some motor fibers also go to the back to the dorsal ramus in the same way some sensory fibers are coming through antero lateral skin or antero lateral receptors and structures is that right and some motor fiber must be going to the muscles of antero lateral wall so this is a very very basic concept that roots are pure anterior root is purely motor posterior root is purely sensory but trunks are mixed and rami are mixed am i clear so it means that sensory information is coming from ventral ramus as well as from dorsal ramus but when it goes to the trunk it segregates separately as sensory input to the central nervous system motor output from spinal cord is coming through ventral root right but after the trunk motor output goes to dorsal ramus as well as ventral ramus am i clear no problem up to this right now basic structures you know that there are receptors receptors are taking the uh, stimulating the neurons sensory neurons sensory neurons are taking information to the spinal cord through the dorsal root ganglion and dorsal root when information come to the spinal cord then ascending tracks have to take the information up this is a very basic concept now listen white matter of spinal cord is divided into this is one white matter what is this this whole area of white matter this is called dorsal column there are of course two dorsal columns these are there are two dorsal columns is that right or you call it dorsal funiculus dorsal funiculus dorsal columns dorsal columns or dorsal funiculus of course this is one funiculus and together they are making two funiculi is it right then these are dorsal columns and which columns are these yeah these are lateral columns is it right what is this this is lateral column and what could be this anterior column of course here what should be coming out motor fibers and there is of course sensory input and put input is from the back and output is from the front i'm talking about simple neuroanatomy right so 
in the spinal cord, how many uh, major white matter areas are there? Dorsal column, lateral column, and anterior column. Is that right? No problem after this. So when we will talk about the tracks, tracks must be, tracks must be running in dorsal column system or lateral column system or anterior column system. One thing very important. In the dorsal column, there are most only ascending tracks. In the dorsal column, there are only ascending tracks. But in the lateral column, there are ascending as well as descending tracks. In interior column also, there are ascending and descending both. It's very basic information. The spinal cord has anterior columns, lateral columns and posterior columns. Is it right? These columns are having tracks. Is it right? For example, if there are a lot of neurons sitting here and from these neurons cell axons come and go upward from here, so this will be making a track. Right? What you have to remember, dorsal column is purely ascending tracks. But lateral columns and interior columns, they have some ascending tracks and some Descending tracks. Am I clear? No problem. Now I will talk about different types of tracks, but you know it now that tracks must be either in dorsal column or they should be in lateral columns or they should be in interior column. Before really I go into detail, as far as ascending track system is concerned, do you think which are more modern and which columns are more primitive? You know, according to the evolution as we are getting more evolved and better animals, we are bringing more modern neuronal bundles and connections, which are very recently developed. Recently mean few million years back. More. Out of these. Do you think? No, no. I'm talking about only ascending tracks. Right? There are dorsal ascending track system, there are anterior tr ascending tracks, and there are lateral. So I'm saying that which one is the most modern? Anyone knows? Anyone who has studied the tracks in history? No. Most modern are the dorsal column. Dorsal column. Dorsal column system is the most modern track system. Ascending tracks. Of course sensory. They are pure sensory. And anterolateral. They are primitive track systems. Anterolateral track system is a primitive track system, ascending track system. That is why the ascending tracks which are present in anterior column and lateral column, some very good neurologists combine them together and in the discussion they say there is an anterolateral ascending system. Anterolateral is a primitive system, primitive system and dorsal is the advanced system, modern system. A very simple question. In America, there are two types of roads. Some roads are so-so, which, which were made about 100 years back. And the modern roads which they are making, interstate highways and I think motorways, what you call them? The modern ones. Expressways. Yeah? Expressways. Expressways, okay. Actually, this is expressway. I will call it motorway fast expressways, super road and this is like for slow sensations. Let me prove it. The bundle, dorsal columns are heavily myelinated and anterolateral columns are lightly myelinated. So where the traffic will be fast, action potential traffic? Dorsal column. And where it will be slow? In the anterolateral system. So which should be modern then? dorsal column, high speed system. This is the neuronal expressways and these are probably dirt roads. <laughs> they serve, they do serve their purpose. Don't laugh at them. They are very important. I will tell you very soon you will realize lot of colors of life are due to anterolateral system. But let me tell you, dorsal column system is advanced system. The ascending tracks are heavily myelinated. So that is a high velocity system, low velocity system. High velocity system. Anterolateral system is a primitive system of ascending tracks. 
So do you think a ventrolateral system is a primitive system? It should be heavily myelinated or poorly myelinated? Poorly myelinated. Do you think anterolateral, which is a poor system, it should be high velocity or moderate or slow velocity system? Slow velocity. You know on dirt road, every car going slow. And on expressway, things are going fast. Another thing. The modern sensations which we have developed, they should be present in dorsal column or anterolateral? Dorsal. dorsal. And primitive sensations should be present in? Anterolateral. Is that right? For example, crude touch. Crude touch means not a fine touch. Crude touch. Anterolateral. Very fine touch. Do you need to memorize this? It's so simple. That this is the dirt roads and these are the expressways. This should be high velocity system. This should be anterolateral should be low velocity system. Anterolateral should be primitive. Dorsal should be advanced. The sensations which are going from the dorsal system should be more well developed sensations. And sensations which are from anterolateral should be crude sensations. Now let me tell you one thing. Anterolateral system has sensations. Okay, first tell me one question, uh, answer something. Do you think the traffic variety, variety of the vehicles, variety of the vehicles is more on the dirt road or variety is more on the expressway? Express you have never observed. One of the vehicle is donkey driven vehicle. You find it on expressway or on the dirt road? Yeah. So, every type of vehicle will move on the dirt road. Primitive road, every type of vehicle. Is that right? You can find on dirt road even Mercedes moving somehow. You will find maybe horse driven cart on the dirt road. You may find a, even someone going on the bicycle on the dirt road. But do you think you find horse driven cart on the expressway? Or do you find someone going on the bicycle on the expressway? No. So variety of traffic should be more in the dorsal column system or anterolateral system? Anterolateral system. Dorsal column system has a high velocity system, very specialized sensations, very good sensations, but more variety of sensation is present in anterolateral system. Let me tell you. You want to know about the anterolateral sensations first or the dorsal sensations first? Anterolateral, primitive you should know first, then we'll talk about the advanced things. Okay. Primitive sensations are like sensation of the pain. The biological system evolved very early, it evolved the pain system, so that you know there is something unpleasant and try to do something about that. So pain should go by anterolateral system. Temperature, heat and cold should go by anterolateral. All those sensations which can go a little bit slowly are anterolateral system. And there are some sensations which should go with very high velocity. And those sensations should be uh, analyzed by central nervous system with very accuracy, with big accuracy. Those should be in the dorsal column. Is that right? As I told you, crude touches in anterolateral and fine touches on dorsal column. Is that right? Pain and temperature is in anterolateral. Crude touches anterolateral. What do you think? T sense of tickling? It's a modern sense or primitive sense? I don't know. Even the, our forefathers know how to tickle. <laughs> That's a very primitive sense. I don't think you do anything very modern with the tickling. Right? So those things have been done by our generations and that is why we are here. Is that right? So tickling. <laughs> tickling is a modern sense or primitive sense? Primitive. primitive sense. So it must be going through? Anterolateral system. Okay, itching. It's a very modern sense or it must be primitive. It's an old sense, you know, not a great sense. So it should be in? Anterolateral. What about sex, uh, sexual sensations? Don't tell me there are no sensations. <laughs> sexual sensations, they are different than simple touch. For example, mother touch is a different thing. And girlfriend touch is somewhat different, am I right? Some element of sex may be added, especially when she is not angry. Is that right? So, these sexual sensations should go through dorsal column system or anterolateral system. You must be thinking as a young boy, it must go dorsal column very fast. <laughs> but I think, but believe me, it's one of the most primitive sensation. 
Is that right? That's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we're here. That's why all of us are here. Yeah, we are the children of the people who made love. Thank God. Is that right? So, what I'm talking about, that ventral column system, sexual sensations should go through ventral column, entral lateral system, uh, dorsal system. Entral lateral. So there are so many variety of sensations. There is crude touch, there is pain, there is heat, cold, tickling, itching, sexual sensations. All these are enterolateral. None of them need to reach to central nervous system with super velocity. But there are some sensations which need to reach the central nervous system with super velocity. And those sensations need to be analyzed by central nervous system extremely with extreme accuracy. Right? With extreme accuracy. Those sensations are dorsal column. One I have told you already, fine touch. What else goes through dorsal column system? 